Hi everybody, welcome to the channel, welcome to another video. Uh, welcome to another video on the BMW F25. Today I'm going to talk about our four years, can't believe it's been four years, ownership on this car. So join us after the intro and we will talk to you and let you know our experiences of the last four years. See you in a minute. join me out and about um, I'm in our BMW F25 30D um, this car we've owned now for four years and we're going to talk to you about general ownership of this car um, the reason that we bought the 30D was because we wanted to sell a caravan and this car has been exceptional at doing that absolutely exceptional um, as far as costs go nothing apart from the transfer case and the axle service which is still really our classes servicing and this car has not cost us anything so we've had a service every year um, it has an oil change twice a year that's just me being pedantic it's not because the car needs it in fact the car very often tells me I've still got 12 13 thousand miles to go before service is due however for the price of the oil and a filter i really don't think it's anything to um, to worry about i mean we never complain about putting expensive diesel in the back of it so why would i worry about a bit of oil in the front of it it does take six and a half liters so it's quite thirsty as far as that's concerned however um yeah it's it's still very bump free my mileage at the moment on this car is 134,450 I've owned it for since 80,000 so we've done over 60, 54,000 in it and nothing nothing to report it still drives like a new car it's beautiful Yes, we look after it. The leather has been fed and looked after. No cuts, tears or anything in it. Um, just nothing. No, nothing to report. I mean, I've heard all the stories, the nasty stories about um, them being a complete money pit. Are they a money pit? Or have you been unlucky? Um, I think, I believe in my heart of hearts that we bought this from uh, we bought it from a dealership and I believe in my heart of hearts this car was looked after before we got it although having said that um, we had new brakes put on it four years ago before we bought it we insisted on that but that was because there was a chatter on the brakes which then turned out to be the transfer case fluid needed changing um, and I put four tyres on it I have put um, necks and tyres on it. I haven't gone mad, but I haven't gone budget. And they've lasted really, really well. Possibly this year we might be looking at a couple of tyres on the back. But what I'll probably do is change the backs to the fronts, fronts to the backs, and then I can put a full set on it to keep the four-wheel drive happy. Although this four-wheel drive on this model seems to be a lot better than the older models. Uh, what else to say about it? It drives beautifully. Um, I'm, we're out and about now and as you can hear you know it's quiet as a mouse there's no knocks bangs nothing wrong no lights on comes up fully there's no faults on the computer so was it worth paying the premium for a premium brand for us yes very much so uh, it was it was expensive at the time however it's proved to be cheap over the last four years um, we've considered upgrading but the question beats is why would we you know while it's doing what it's doing it's not letting us down in any major way um, no oh the other thing I've put on is a battery um, and obviously we had to uh, invest in the reader to tell the car it's had a battery as I've mentioned in previous videos if you don't tell the car that it's had a new battery it will fry some of your um, Call them that. Think of it in a minute. There's a, the 
there's a network of computers on this that tell the car what to do, when to do it. When the battery starts getting low, it puts more power to those computers that it needs rather than the ones that it doesn't. So things like power windows, mirrors, things like that, it will take the power away from to feed something like for the engine or the management system. If you don't, modules, they're modules. If you don't tell it that you put a new battery on, it still carries on sending the extra power. However, obviously it's a much more powerful battery, so it will blow the modules. And I've seen reports of cars that have been totaled because of it. So um, you must do that. If you buy a BMW, I'm sure all the makes of cars are the same as well, but I'm pretty sure that if you're buying a BMW, you need to buy, you need to invest in this reader. It wasn't overly expensive, um, and I've done a couple of friends' cars with it as well, so. So yeah, so over four years, it's had four tires, a battery, uh, discs and pads and oil changes, oil and filter changes. It's had two fuel filters in that time. Um, it's probably due again this year for another one. But they're, they're just serviceable items, they're not anything outstanding that's broken. It's had two recalls uh, on the heater system or the um, EGR valve system um, or the DBF system, I don't really know. All I know is when you open the bonnet and look at the front, it's brand new. There's a big unit on the front that's brand new. Uh, it went in to have one done and BMW decided that that wasn't really doing the trick um, and they recalled it for another one. So, um, and the thing with BMW is uh, they're just amazing. I took this for its MOT, we were sat down, we were given coffee and croissants and biscuits and things um, in the showroom, asked if we were okay, if we wanted anything, they take the car away, they then did a, a pre-inspection on the car and gave it a full bill of health and then they MOT'd it. And uh, I got a private number plate on this, which I'd forgotten to change, and I'd spaced um, a number out, so that it was actually spaced wrong, so obviously that's going to fail on MOT. Um, which, after sitting there, realised the thoughts of my concerns and spoke to them, and they went, don't worry about it, and I thought, oh, well, I'm just going to make out that, whatever, no. Uh, they actually made some plates up for it and put new plates on it for me so it could be MOT'd and charged me very very little for doing it. The fuel filter they charged me £110 for last time that's at a BMW dealership. The filter itself is about 45 quid you know and for that for not having the hassle of having to get underneath the car and get some way of programming the car to send the fuel back to the tank because that's what they do they send the fuel back to the tank they then put the new fuel filter in and then the, the computer bleeds the system. These are one of the hardest to get started with if you run out of fuel. Um, and obviously they literally just do that for you. So was it worth paying the premium? Yes. The after service care that you get from BMW, even though the fact this is getting quite old now, they still give you the same service that they give to the person who just bought a new one. So I highly rate BMWs. And that's why we've kept this car so long and why we will continue to keep it and enjoy it. And um, when asked, I was a bit concerned about the timing chain. So I did say to them, you know, what's the service intervals for the timing chain? Um, to reply was, we recommend it's changed every 200,000 miles. This 30D engine seemed to be the one that people recommend to be the best engine the BMW do. And, um, I know that if I was to buy another BMW, I'd make sure I got this engine in it. Plenty quick enough, plenty of power. Um, the options on mine, it's got full lighting pack. Um, it's got economy up to Sport Plus. I'm not sure what Sport Plus bit does. Um, not really read the book. However, you know, you put it to Sport and it just brings the revs up. Gear change is so quick, really quick. And then you've got the M Sport, if you knock the lever over to the side, this is the A-speed automatic. Knock the lever over to the left and you go straight into M Sport and then you change it yourself. It's a very grubby day today. I'm glad that um, 
it's Mother's Day and uh, I'm popping over to see my mum at the minute as we speak. Even down to the way the indicators tick, they, they sound quality. I can see why they're having such success with the Rolls Royce and why people want them. You know, people who are affluent enough to afford to run something like that and they want them because the quality of them is fantastic. Um, a friend of mine has just bought a 7 Series and um, it's uh, 2014. It's a stunning car. I plugged it in, nothing to show on it. It's got a full service history with it from BMW. Um, if, they'd have had, if, that, if that had got a Rolls Royce badge on it, I would have thought it was a Rolls Royce. Absolutely phenomenal. I know the Rolls Royce has got some parts from that, but obviously then they go to the next level. And once I've been in the 7 Series, I didn't think there would be another level. Wear and tear on it's been amazing. We've uh, we take we've got the dog as most of you know. He goes in the back. Yeah, I've got a, a rug thing on the back seat for him. But there's no damage in the back. In over four years, no damage in the back. And he can bounce around if he gets excited. He can be a proper little uh, live wire when he wants to be. And no nothing. The only thing I have done is I've had the rear um, tinted windows done because. I wanted to keep it cooler for socks, um, not particularly for any other reason. Um, I took those to a friend of mine who does an absolute superb job for not a lot of money. Yeah, and, and the, the thing I love about this car, you pair along at 50 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour, and you're doing less than 1,500 revs. At 70, it's under 2,000. It's a proper brute cruiser. I'm getting well over 40 to the gallon, knocking about, going to work and knocking around. Get on a run and she'll do over 50. Unless, of course, you've got uh, the caravan on the back. Even with the caravan on the back, she does over 30. Which I think is really good for a big 3 litre, 6 cylinder engine. So four years ownership of the BMW, absolutely positive. Uh, one of my videos on the F25 BMW, somebody said it's just a money pit, my brother said it's a money pit, and he's got rid of his. I, I think if you're gonna go to BMW to have work done, yes, they're gonna be expensive. However, if you are fortunate enough to do the basics yourself, then they're not expensive. They're no more expensive than any other car. Insurance on this, I've just been looking at Range Rovers. Always wanted a Range Rover. I know that there can be a problem, I know there can be an issue, always fancied one, started looking around at them, and they're a premium price, and I don't know why. They are more insurance, they are more road tax, and less power. So, it's BMW all the way for me, I'm afraid. And I will obviously never own the car that I've always ascertained to own because at the end of the day I will buy a car with my heart but it will have to still satisfy my head and a BMW car like that it doesn't satisfy my head uh, sorry a Range Rover car doesn't satisfy my head and the simple reason for that is I know that they go wrong I know they do and I've heard stories of BMWs going wrong but nowhere near the amount of stories that I've heard about Range Rovers so unfortunately they won't be happening. Uh, also, in the family we have an X5 as well, um, and that, that's given no grief either. The only thing that I know that's had in the last three years, I think they've had it, is the handbrake uh, actuator. That's it. So, would I recommend BMW? Yes, I would. Would I buy another one? Definitely. Will I be selling this one? No. So, listen guys, listen, I've got to stop saying guys, listen everybody, thank you so much for watching this video, I will see you in another video, I know it's not one of the biking ones, but I thought it was appropriate being on the, the car, 
we have put a couple of um, videos up on the car. Maybe you are looking at an older BMW and you fancy, you know, you fancy it and you're perhaps not sure. Well, this is my experience. So, take care everybody. All the best.